Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. I got a uh, little bit of an interesting one for you today. I, I've got uh, I've got a quandary. It's not really a quandary. It's <laughs> uh, I want to do a little better organization. I want to get the mosquitoes out of my shop. Uh, I got a market next weekend. And uh, my table at markets in the past has basically just been stuff laid out on a table and a couple of little sort of TV tray tables off to either side with some more things. And I want to get my main table surface a little better organized, a little cleaner look, and have the ability to put a few more things on it so I don't have to constantly be digging under the table to replace stuff when it goes missing. Or when, well, hopefully it doesn't go missing. Hopefully people buy it. Uh, so to that end, I want to make a couple of little display racks to put some things on. I just started making pens. So um, I need a rack to display some of those. And I kind of want to horizontal verticalize some of my charcuterie boards in a in a rack as well to get a few of a few more of them up on the table and get them a little easily uh, sorted through and stuff like that. I don't know if this is gonna work at all in terms of like bringing people into the booth. Uh, but I think it will help me organize my surface a little better. So let's go through the couple of design ideas that I've got up in my head for a pen rack and a charcuterie board rack, and then we'll find some scrap wood laying around that we can make them out of. Okay. All right. Remember, if you like what I do here, you can head over to patreon.com slash wooden things and stuff, find out how to help me out. And I would appreciate it if you would hit that little uh, like button and subscribe to the channel as well while you're here. All right, let's get into design and then we'll grab some scraps. Rack, market booth rack day. Could be, could be interesting. We'll see. Come on. Okay, so as far as the, uh, the charcuterie board rack goes, I'm thinking I'll just grab some scrap two by material and we'll do an angled Take one board and we'll angle it like that kind of a thing. We'll have another one like that. So these are going to be angled two by ish material that meet in the middle. And I'll put a little hinge in here so that I can fold it flat and I'll have some dowels coming out every couple inches or so. And then boards can sit in it this way and kind of go up the uh, rack thing. But that's just a concept idea that I have. It depends on what kind of scrap I find laying around the shop that I can use for it. Uh, but I think that's kind of going to be the general idea. I'll use whatever length or whatever diameter of dowel I have enough of and uh, whatever scrap material I have to make these side wings. I probably got some two by stuff laying around. And then in terms of the uh, pen rack, that's going to be relatively simple design as well. I'm going to have a flat board going like this. And then I'll have an upright board sort of close to the front. We'll use the back bit of it for leverage to keep it from tipping. I'll have this board going up like this. And then I'll have another board coming off this board that just sticks out just a little ways. That'll have some little notches in it. And I'll put some little dents in the board down here. And then I'll have my pens will sit like that, upright. And the size of that will also depend on what size scrap boards I find to make it out of. Hopefully that's, again, not, not great depictions of what I'm doing, but hopefully it gives you an idea of the way that I'm thinking at this point. So let's uh, find some scraps and we'll get building. All right, so here's what I found for material. Get these two pieces of eight quarter-ish Douglas fir that are I don't know, maybe 18 inches long. That'll be uh, that'll be lots of material for the uh, sides of the 
charcuterie board rack. I think I've got enough 3 8 bow, which should be sturdy enough in maybe four or five inch sections upright to hold charcuterie boards. And for the pen rack, I found this old piece of uh, oak, which looks like it was the, the leaf or something for an old table. Uh, it's got a bunch of holes and stuff in it, so it's probably not going to be good for too much else other than breaking it down for a small project like this. So, and then I think if I can chop this that way, and then an upright, and then a, a piece, oh yeah, I think, I think that'll, that'll work. Alright, let's get milling these pieces. These pieces are wonky, so these are going to have to get milled pretty substantially. But then we can get uh, ready to cut some, cut some things, make some cuts, make some stuff. All right, jointer. Okay, so as always, we got to start by milling everything flat and square, and getting all the material prepped for actually making cuts. Let's start over at the jointer. One face, one edge, and then on over to the planer to get the other face perpendicular and also flat. Nope! Over to the table saw first. Uh, get that other edge perpendicular to the edge and then over to the jointer. <laughs> I don't even know my own milling process. It does vary from time to time, so don't make fun of me. <laughs> so over to the jointer. We crank that thing down a little bits at a time as these things are going through. Basically, I didn't care how thick it was, just as long as both sides were flat and parallel. And then I can set up a stop block over at the table saw and get these things cut to the same length. Again, I didn't actually care what that length was. Uh, and then I could mark in, I think I went in about an inch from the bottom and then to almost the top, but I just wanted to make sure that they were the same. And then I could use a straight edge to draw that line connecting those two points and I could head over to the bandsaw to get those cut out because I didn't feel like setting up a tapering jig for that this is just as fast and I can just make that quick cut and then uh, smooth it off over back at the jointer one quick pass takes care of all those bandsaw marks and uh, then I set up a fence on my drill press and I made marks on it every inch and a half so that both sides would, uh, the holes would match up. And I could make holes all the way up it and start sanding the pieces. I think I probably only went up to about 150 grit on this one because it's, it's a display rack. It doesn't really need to be super smooth. And then I could do a final hand sanding, break all the edges and round over all the little corners and stuff. And uh, get the dowels cut which I think we're about looking at the marks on the fence there. It looks like about four and a half inch dowels, uh, three eighths inch dowels, four and a half inches long. And I started pillowing the ends of them like this and then realized that it would be much more efficient to uh, chuck them up in a drill <laughs> and do it like that. And that sped up the process quite significantly. And then I could get them mounted up in the holes that they go in. I never did end up gluing these in. They were a uh, form fit. I have a video actually on how to get dowels that will fit snugly into holes. Uh, I'll put that up in the corner. And then I'm just test fitting to make sure that the, everything is where it should be and the charcuterie boards fit in there and then I can just mount a hinge up on the inside of the contraption and splooge, splooge some finish all over it. Just with the Howard's Feed and Wax, same thing I use on the charcuterie boards themselves. So. And then we can move over to the pen display rack. So we end up, we start with just cutting the edges off this piece of wood. It's, uh, it's quarter sawn red oak, I believe. Um, and I can make three pieces that will create the uh, the rack. Now it's just kind of trying to get a, a, a spacing that allows for the pens to rest at an angle I like. Uh, and then I can mark off where I want to cut that dado or groove to 
depending on which way it's running, doesn't matter. Uh, into the bottom one, and set up the dado stack uh, to just make it a little bit quicker. I didn't try to set the stack to be the full width of the dado. I decided I'd just add a couple of a couple of blades in there to make it a little quicker, and then sneak up on the cut until it fit. And then once that one fit in, I could take this other piece over and make a mark on the upright board where I want the, uh, what do you call, what, what should we call it, the, the pen resting chunk to uh, fit into the upright. And once that fits in all snug, see, I can even pick it up with the other board. That's a nice snug joint. Uh, then I mark off every inch or so and square it off with my little Veritas little pocket square thing that I give. I really like that little square. It comes in handy. Uh, and then here I am. I'm setting up my drill press so that it goes all the way down and just barely goes into that piece at its most bottom most point. And then I double stick tape the pieces together and I'm going to go through that top board into the bottom board so that it just leaves a little dick dick in the in the bottom board but it gives me through holes in that top board that I will then use to um, well you'll see in a second I use those top those through holes after I sand all the pieces but not too much that they aren't gonna fit snug anymore in their dados I, I use those through holes to place the Forstner bit that I'm using a half inch bit to space out the notches that the pens will rest in and then take it over to the table saw and rip right through those holes so now I've got little semicircles and then I can rip off the piece that's going to fit into the upright so that outside piece is my keeper so that goes in there and that goes up there for the pens to rest in and then I've got my little dick dicks in that bottom board for the pen tips to rest in see how that goes I thought I was pretty proud of myself when I thought of that idea and then I can just epoxy the whole thing together and once it's all glued up uh, I just that that bottom dado was a little loose so I wanted to use epoxy and I clamped it right to my bench and um, spring clamped the top piece into the upright and then I could get to final sanding and I again I think I probably only went up to about 150 on this one as well because it's a display rack uh, but I wanted to get into all the little semicircle bits as well so that's just a piece of dowel in a piece of sandpaper and then Howard's feed and wax on that as well and then I went because I knew that there were going to be pens in the thing with their tips exposed so they were going to make little marks and stuff so I just pre-darkened all of those little tip spots with a sharpie and uh, then I could line them up and set up a bunch of pens and see how it looked and I think it looks pretty cool. See in the back there I got a whole bunch more pen blanks ready to be made into pens. Uh, yeah, pens are super fun. Uh, and then I just added some Howards to the pegs that went in the uh, charcuterie board display and we're all done. Well, there we go. We got uh, room for 12 pens on a rack made out of quarter sawed oak and we got room for nine charcuterie boards on a rack of Douglas fir and maple dowels. I think it's gonna be a heck of an improvement on my market table. I probably won't fill all the slots in the I think it they actually look good every other one so it'll probably hold five but that's a heck of an improvement uh in terms of floor space floor table space <laughs> floor space on the table uh you get about two and a half charcuterie boards worth of space you can get five charcuterie boards in it so improvement and I, I'm actually really happy with how the pen rack looks so, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye for now.